Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here today. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really happy to talk about uh, digital personalized care today. Uh, my name is Johannes Bosco. I'm uh, working in the business development team of Observia, and we use behavioral science in order to develop personalized uh, engagement and support solutions for people living with chronic conditions. Before I dive a little bit into, into what it is that we do exactly, I want to take a brief second to talk about why we talk about digital personalized care at all. So the last years and decades really uh, have obviously seen tremendous shifts uh, in the consumer world and in sort of what's happening there. We have more centralized services. We have a quicker and faster delivery of products. We have personalized recommendations from anything from movies to our shopping lists and everything just has become a lot quicker and a lot simpler. And that has obviously also put a little bit of pressure on the healthcare industry because ultimately patients and medical professionals are consumers and that implicitly uh, also uh, increases their expectations uh, whenever they engage with services. And then additionally, uh, technology had, could make a lot of things simpler um, and we know that they can make a lot of things simpler, but healthcare itself is a little bit of a different beast with, with way less room for error and with a lot higher need for trust and transparency simply because the stakes are so much higher. When we talk about uh, personalization and personalized care, um, obviously uh, we, we see this across uh, the patient journey coming in, right? So what used to be prevention, um, there's, there's personalized recommendations based on genetic testing. Um, there is, within diagnosis, we can, uh, we can obviously uh, define really, really small biomarkers, for example, in tumors to really understand how, how the tumor would behave and how to best treat it. Uh, for treatment, uh, we see a lot of uh, involvement as well, for example, in cell and gene therapies where the, the bo body's own cells are used to treat uh, certain conditions. Uh, and then uh, within the disease management and, and sort of living with conditions, um, this is where we uh, also come in and provide a lot of that personalization in order to help sort of merge that personal and medical sphere and not view a patient as a patient, but view, uh, view, the, view the entire person and help that entire person develop um, positive behaviors and positive attitudes towards their condition and living with um, their condition. Now, the way something like this uh, personalized support would um, classically be done is, uh, you can see in the top here, um, that would be that we deploy an algorithm that learns how a user interacts with the program and then sort of optimizes for certain parameters in order to, to enhance that uh, user's engagement with the platform. Now, as I said in the beginning, we use behavioral science here quite a lot. Uh, so what we've done is we've taken a little bit of a different route. So we've developed this holistic model uh, of, of users and how people um, basically behave uh, within health. Um, that then helps us understand each individual user's needs, each, each individual, individual user's uh, motivation, uh, and what drives uh, that users towards certain things in order to really detail and really personalize the services that we offer to that user in order to develop uh, positive behaviors. We then deploy algorithms uh, on that user model uh, within the programs in order to help understand how that user inter how these users interact and how these models interact with the platform and what sort of uh, drives certain parameters. Um, and then we optimize we optimize those. Now this seems a little bit more complex uh, than the classical approach, and that is simply, but it has a lot of be benefits. Um, quite simply, uh, we can explain the decisions that the, that the system makes. So we know why certain uh, things are suggested because we know which are the underlying drivers uh, of, of the user, of the user model, so to say. It also is a lot more transparent because that first step is, a, is, is where the user specifically answers a few questions to create that user model. Um, which means that the user explicitly shares data and actually draws feedback um, from that and so gains, gains value from just uh, creating that user model by himself. 
obviously, uh, we are also a lot better in terms of interoperability because now these systems, because work on user models, can also be deployed in solutions, for example, that don't create as much engagement um, and don't create as much or don't allow to understand as much the specific users, but then we can draw conclusions from other or similar systems uh, more easily. And then last, uh, lastly, uh, it's also a lot more transparent towards the people that work with the user outside of the program. So we can give actual feedback about, um, about the patient's uh, behavior towards the specific physician or, or, or other medical professional in order to allow them then also to further personalize uh, their services and their treatment uh, of, of, the, of the user. Now I want to talk about very briefly an example uh, that we that we that we have developed uh, together with no, uh, Novartis and Lovair, and that is Altis. Um, it can currently it's currently accessible on the Happy Air platform, um, so feel free to have a look. Um, Altis is a virtual health assistant for uh, people living with asthma, so it means it technically presents as a chatbot on the um, on the Happy Air platform, but it does a lot more than that. As I just described, it uses the same behavioral model sort of in the background, which allows us to personalize the conversation. So Altis will talk with each individual user a little differently, depending on what they prefer uh, in terms of how the conversation is going and also how, how to best basically uh, allows you to respond and interact with, uh, with a chatbot. In the background, also Altis creates uh, for each user a 16-week program that contains validated information but also content recommendations in order to, to, to get every user on an individual path toward uh, developing positive behaviors um, throughout this journey. And then it contains uh, sort of an air quality check which then also helps you deploy these positive behaviors and avoid exacerbations by, for example, poor air quality. Uh, if you want to learn more, feel free to visit the website uh, that is visited here or uh, talk to Lover. I'm sure they're also uh, happy to share their insights here. Before I close, uh, the topic was also about working with patient organizations, and we, log we work a lot um, with patient organizations, and there's tremendous benefit in that um, and how they're sitting within the entire ecosystem at a, at a very unique stage. So on the one hand, uh, whenever we develop a tech solution, it is really, 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 really important to remain completely user-centric. Um, and here patients, patient associations, patient organizations uh, can bring that, that, that patient voice towards uh, the development because they really understand the need uh, and they can really uh, take that user-centric approach towards the development, specifically when we talk about co-creation approaches. Uh, and they can remain connected uh, also from a regulatory perspective to, to all these other stakeholders that we can see here. And then secondly, uh, once a solution is developed, they provide another really, really important entry point, and that is by, by being trustful, they can help patients engage with, with solutions and uh, can actually drive patients towards the solutions, um, which obviously means we're not ending up with these isolated uh, small instances where, where, where some people use a certain solution, but uh, the, the, the full extent is not really realized. And uh, when we work with patient organizations, we typically see way better engagement, way, way higher enrollment rates in the programs, uh, which ultimately then also helps us help the patient. And with that, I would like to close. I thank you for your attention. I thank you again for the invitation. And I will now happily hand over to my colleague, Jeremy, who will be available for the Q&A. Thank you.